Okay, here we go. Uh, welcome, I'm Miro, the track chair. Uh, this is Microsoft, uh, invited as a featured uh, speech about uh, redefining the mind shift uh, at Microsoft. Uh, yes, thanks a lot for showing up here, and uh, I'm really excited to have you here, and thank you. And uh, I'm really eager to hear yeah, what you're having to tell us. <laughs> Thank you, Miro, and thanks to the organizers of this conference for this really wonderful opportunity to be here today. Um, my name is Grace Francisco. I'm actually from San Francisco, believe it or not. That's true. Uh, and then what's also true is I do work for Microsoft. I've been working for Microsoft for eight years, and the last two and a half years, believe it or not, has been all focused around open source community work. Uh, I am on Twitter. That's my Twitter ID, GraceFR. If you're looking to find out what I'm eating or where I'm going, you're not going to find it there. But I try to share some useful tidbits. Along with me today, ooh, along with me today, I have um, Mark Brown, the teddy bear-looking guy over there. He's a technical marketing for Azure. Sorry. By the way, on Twitter, you're likely just to be offended by what I have to say rather than what I'm eating. Or doing. <laughs> And on his other side, uh, Brian Swan is a technical writer, also on the Azure team. And then Michaela Kraft on the end there, the beautiful Michaela Kraft. She is a local person in Western Europe that covers this area. All of us actually focus on open source. That may or may not be a surprise to some of you guys, but we actually have hundreds, thousands of people in Microsoft that do something with open source in the company worldwide. As a company, we actually are very committed to openness, and we demonstrate that in three very specific ways. We really have a commitment around playing well with others, and we do that by being involved regularly in standards, by really being involved in making sure that open source technologies work with our technologies as well. We listen very carefully to our customers, and as a result, we look at uh, ways to combine our technologies with other technologies to ensure that we're providing innovative solutions that are cost-effective for them and efficient. And we are open in the cloud. We're open in the cloud today. You can actually develop on Azure, which is our cloud platform, and use Java. You can use Python. You can use PHP. You can use Node.js today on Azure. And Mark is going to be talking in a little bit here about more specific things that we're enabling with open source project on Azure. So I'm going to take a minute here to talk a little bit more about how we're investing in standards, what we're doing with embracing and enabling these open source projects. This may come as a surprise to some of you guys, but Microsoft has actually been involved in standards work for over 20 years. And today we're actually part of 150 official standards organizations and part of 400 working groups. And we do that because we see that as a critical and essential way that we enable interoperability with other projects, with other open source projects and other technologies. And that is because we, we all want happy customers. No single vendor can possibly offer all of the solutions a single customer's you know, complex environment might need. And so we do that so that we have a happy customer that can use any device connected to any system and have it work the way that they expect. A few other factoids about the stuff we've been doing with open source. In a single year, because of all the work we're doing to enable these open source projects on our platform, we had 400% growth just in a single year alone. So we have over 350,000 projects. That zero scooted over on Mark's Mac. Um, <laughs> sorry. And that's 350,000, not three five. Three hundred fifty dollars is 350,000 uh, projects working on Windows. Uh, 23 of the top 25 open source projects actually work on our platform. CodePlex, some of you may or may not be familiar with, is one of the open source communities that we've been uh, fostering. And that continues to grow with numbers of open source projects that we and other people in the community continue to contribute. And we have 300,000 registered users. That also is continuing to grow. Microsoft Web Gallery is where we have a listing of many of the web applications that also work on our platform. And 
we have well over 5 million downloads there since its inception over three years ago. One of those, actually two of those um, popular applications that's being downloaded is Acquia Drupal's package, and the second one being Commerce Kickstart, and I'll mention also the third, since Brian Tiemann is here, being Joomla. And here I'm going to turn over to Mark so he can talk more about how we're involved with open source in our product groups and how we're enabling those. Mark? All right. Thanks, Grace. So I think everybody kind of remembers the famous, you know, uh, Linux is a cancer uh, comment that our, our famous CEO uh, made some years ago. Um, while that was something that stands out in the news and certainly stands out in people's mind, it actually internally at Microsoft was something of a watershed event. Uh, as a lot of people who have been at the company for a lot of years uh, actually, uh, you know, were involved with the open source community and understood open source uh, for what it really is rather than uh, what the perceptions were internally uh, among the leadership at the time. I mean, and one of the big things that kind of fell out of that was uh, for us to really organize uh, around open source technologies and to work to try and integrate uh, and interoperate with them. And one of those things was uh, the creation of our open source technology center. Uh, and through that technology center, we basically hired a lot of Linux developers and low-level uh, developers uh, to try and work with Linux and then try and work to interoperate uh, with Linux and other open source technologies. Uh, some of the things you'll see out of that or have seen out of that is uh, a lot of contributions we've been giving to, to, to Linux. And in fact, Microsoft now uh, is one of the top contributors to the Linux kernel. Uh, and we provide drivers for Linux uh, and also provide uh, uh, integration with our Hyper-V uh, virtualization technology. Uh, one of the other big contributions that came out of that group uh, was contributions to PHP. Uh, beginning with version PHP 5.3, uh, Microsoft, and along with guys like Pierre Joy, who was up here in the session just beforehand, uh, along with a lot of other PHP core contributors, uh, essentially took and rewrote uh, all of PHP uh, and then created a build for Windows in there. So a lot of PHP, and of course the legacy for PHP is on Unix, uh, and of course Win32 uh, and our operating system and libraries work a little differently. Uh, we wanted to make PHP work really well on, on Windows, uh, and so instead of maintaining a consistent code base, we decided we'd maintain consistent APIs uh, and then optimize the source code underneath uh, and optimize that for, for Windows. And a lot of that had to do with a lot of file I.O. and some other stuff uh, involved in there. The result you get now is essentially parity uh, for PHP running on Windows uh, as you would get on Unix or Linux. Um, what else have I got in there? Oh, and then other stuff around Samba. I think everybody's aware with our contributions and work with those guys as well. Um, yeah, next slide. Yeah, Brian, you want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, SQL Server and the work you guys have done? You put me on the spot here. Huh? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> um, so one of the um, towards towards making sure um, PHP not only runs well on uh, SQL Server, but that uh, you have a full range of functionality that you would expect from PHP running on running on Windows. Um, we put a lot of work into uh, a PHP driver for SQL Server. Um, that is uh, an open source project. Um, it's it's on, I think it's now on GitHub. It used to be um, on CodePlex, but we've recently moved it to GitHub. Um, what the biggest request that we've had for, uh, for that driver, I mean, we've had lots of uh, little requests and we've tried to implement those, um, but the biggest, sing single biggest request that we've had has been that, uh, it, that it runs on PHP running on Linux, right? So that you can have SQL Server access um, from PHP on Linux. Uh, we recently released the, uh, uh, an OD ODBC driver uh, for Linux, a SQL Server ODBC driver for Linux. Um, and if you put two and two together, uh, you can sort of kind of see that uh, since our, our PHP driver now uh, sits on top of uh, ODBC APIs on Windows, um, it's not going to be too long before that scenario is, is enabled. So some of the other stuff we've been uh, working on, certainly around our web platform. Um, and around particularly our IIS product. IIS used to be pretty awful, frankly, as a web server back in the IIS 5 and 6 days. Uh, that largely changed with the IIS 7. Uh, we've just basically just chucked a lot of it uh, and rewrote uh, most of that from scratch. Um, FastCGI, or implementing FastCGI on our platform to host PHP applications was a part of that. Uh, a lot of the other work that went into making uh, it better, though, were a lot of uh, a lot of code we wrote that we actually ended up just uh, open sourcing 
uh, in general. Uh, WinCache is kind of a functional APC cache, so it's an opcode cache for PHP and then also a user cache for data uh, that you may pull out of MySQL. Uh, that's completely open source. It's actually contributed to Peckle uh, as well. So if you go and install PHP on Windows, you can go and pull down this Peckle extension and then automatically get, you know, 200% plus improvement uh, for PHP on Windows. Um, Managing PHP, uh, for some, at least in the Windows world, can be a little confusing. Uh, so another project we created was PHP Manager, which is just a plugin uh, for IIS. And we decided we would just open source that as well. Uh, so that's also available. Um, quite a few years ago, we created this thing called ASP.NET um, Ajax. Um, and what we realized is that uh, it, it didn't make a lot of sense for us to create our own version of kind of JavaScript library. So we ended up just chucking that thing and then adopting jQuery. And now we're actually one of the largest contributors uh, to jQuery. And we actually ship jQuery uh, with our tools in there. Um, so the point I'm trying to make there is that even within our own .NET community, there was kind of a, a mind shift happening that was growing out of just people that were working strictly with kind of the Linux and the PHP communities uh, into our own web developer communities. Uh, in realizing that it's, it makes much more sense to contribute to existing successful projects than it is to try and compete with them, even if you do open source the code that's with there or within them. And so that kind of mind shift kind of just started trickling up and out uh, within the company. And so after we started doing contributions to jQuery, uh, the team that basically does all our web platform stuff or all the ASP.NET stuff said, well, maybe we should take that same approach with our own technologies. And so some of the other stuff they've been doing now is they've now taken and open source pretty much the entire code base for all the ASP.NET stuff. So ASP.NET MVC, there's a web API, uh, and then our, we have a Razor View engine, which is like an MVC uh, view engine, and then another thing called the Entity Framework. Um, so kind of the point they're making is that, uh, you know, the, the whole understanding and, and how to work with the open source communities was now starting to kind of grow uh, outwards uh, and, and touch a larger section of the company, right? And even into our own .NET uh, engineering teams there. Another slide? Right, and so that kind of continues now, actually, and the leadership that's been a part of that uh, part of the company is now largely running a lot of our Azure and our cloud stuff. Um, so some of the work we've been doing now and includes not just Drupal, uh, but other web communities like Joomla, and then of course there's other open source communities in the .NET world like Embraco and .NET Nuke. Um, and now, uh, you know, and then that's going even further now with uh, work with Java and Node.js. Um, and then kind of finally the big kind of big coup was uh, uh, support for Linux itself within our own cloud platform. Uh, so now if you want to go and you you know, host your applications in, in our Windows Azure Cloud Platform. You can choose Windows if you want, uh, or you can choose uh, Linux, or if you want, you can upload your own flavor of Linux uh, even. So it's actually now really uh, to the point where, um, you know, that mind shift is actually kind of reflected in the products and the services that we want to come to market with, right? Because we really believe that the choice is what matters, right? And the ability to make that choice. Uh, so I think now it's kind of really come uh, full circle for us uh, as a company. Brian? So um, one of the, um, you know, as Mark talked, just said, the, um, where you're seeing a lot of the change now is in, in, in our Azure platform. And where you're seeing, um, uh, where you'll see that if you go to any one of our, uh, one of our dev centers. Um, what, we have, what we've realized uh, in, you know, one of the things that we've learned in um, being committed to uh, open source and interoperability is that documentation uh, cannot take a, a back seat. It can't be an afterthought. Um, and if you take a look at, there's just a screenshot up there of uh, what's available on our dev center and the, uh, the various languages that we are, we are supporting and trying to provide documentation for. Um, it certainly presents its challenges in trying to, to document all of these other languages um, that, other, that uh, other groups and communities are producing. Um, and document the interoperability between uh, those languages and our, and our platform. Um, one of the things that we learned uh, was that MSDN didn't work. I don't know if any of you have tried to use MSDN documentation, um, but that was not 
something that was going to work for us. Um, what we needed to do was get documentation in front of where people are reading documentation, where, where you guys go for it, um, and put it in a format that, um, uh, that you're used to and, and, can, and can digest easily. easily. So we've, um, you, you see a lot more um, blogs uh, that are focused on open source technology. You see a lot more, um, you see do our documentation, uh, we've contributed document documentation to php.net. Um, and if you take a look at the Windows Azure uh, Dev Center, you'll see uh, an entirely different format, different from, uh, from the MSDN format as well. And I think the, 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 uh, the crowning jewel, at least in my view, about documentation is that all the documentation is also open source. It's all in Markdown on, Git, uh, on GitHub. Um, so when, when you see that bug in the documentation that says, wait a minute, that code example doesn't work or something isn't explained clearly, um, you can uh, fork it and submit a pull request and have that um, merged uh, into the documentation and it gets published on a, on a weekly basis. So that's, um, you know, we're, we're, we're taking not only the, the mind shift that, that has um, gone into the product and the, uh, w the services that we're offering, you know, is also reflected in the documentation and the processes um, for our publishing documentation. And as far as the work that we've done to, to increase our openness with Drupal, I've actually been working specifically in the Drupal community for the last two and a half years. And some of that work actually started well before I took on my role. Um, and just to give you a sense for you know, the work that we've done over across the, this timeline, um, in 2010, we actually partnered up with the Commerce guys and sponsored the work that they were doing around the SQL Server integration. And then we extended that work to also include SQL Azure and Azure itself. So they actually built and contributed modules to Drupal.org that people could use to enable SQL Server integration, SQL Azure integration, and Azure deployment. Um, in terms of listening to customers, I started working with uh, Jacob Redding and the Drupal Association. Was really, you know, when I started out this work, I spent a lot of time listening to feedback, listening to what the needs of the community were all about. And some of the things that came back um, pretty readily was, hey, you know, we have some of these Windows developers, and you know, they try to download the modules. They're all in tar file, and some of them just don't know what to do with that because they're they're new to the platform. They don't understand what to do. Uh, with these tar files. Wouldn't it be great if actually we had zip file formats? By the way, we're doing a Drupal.org you know, revision of the website. Um, and so we talked about you know, helping and sponsoring updates to the site overall, which also included zip files format. So anytime you actually upload a new module, that automatically gets converted to zip. And a year later, I'd heard Robert Douglas actually say, you know, it's something like 44% of the downloads were actually in that zip file format. So that got put to use pretty quickly. The other piece of feedback that I got was, you know, Drush was the de facto tool people were using, and, you know, people were really trying to cobble this together on Windows, you know, somewhat successfully, but not, not really, and it was a really painful process. So we invested and sponsored some work with Pro People, which is uh, now Wonderkraut? Yeah, Pro People, which is now Wonderkraut. Uh, but back then, they were Pro People, and they, I also sponsored some work there to get Drush compatible on Windows. Uh, last, uh, Last March in Denver, Moshe was doing a big Drush uh, session, which he's doing right now, actually, in, an, in another room. And one of the things he said was, it's arguably easier to install Drush on Windows today than on any other platform. And that was due to the investment and, and really the partnering that we did with Moshe and Greg Anderson and folks in the community that volunteered as well as pro people in their work in making that compatible. We also invested on actually creating a set of content to be delivered in person in Denver, which was Drupal at scale on Windows, because we got a lot of questions over and over again at the booth about, well, I, you know, we don't have the guidance around this. How do we deploy this at scale? You know, what's the equivalent of the things that I'm using on my LAMP stack to, to Windows Server? So we enlisted the help of a Microsoft MVP who happened to also be a Red Hat Linux certified engineer. And he was able to talk and create training that was in terms of what you guys know and understand. And so that was delivered in Denver, and we actually have that online for free on Channel 9, so you can actually consume that content now. 
Um, the other thing that we did this past year is we actually contributed directly a couple of modules. One is the WinCache module uh, to be integrated directly with Drupal. That's, again, performance optimization. Mark referred to that a little bit earlier. And OData, which is enlists a standard, basically, for data exchange. And so both of these modules have been contributed to Drupal.org directly by our teams. We're also an inaugural Drupal supporting partner. And this is our seventh DrupalCon, and we've got several more that we've already enlisted, subscribed for, for in this coming year. So you're going to continue to see more and more of us, and you know we are really happy to be here and talking with everyone. So please, we're here to listen to your feedback. We'd love to talk to you more. You've got any questions? We're at the booth, and we'd love to talk to you. Michaela. I said I'm working in the field and I'm really the counterpart. Can you, can you hear me? I can, I can hear you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear myself as well. Let's do it this way. Better? <laughs> Good. So um, I'm the counterpart to my colleagues from the US. So I'm really working in the field. And I work a lot with the Drupal shops to make this partnership more lively. and. On this list, you can see my daily work. So on one hand side, I'm helping sponsoring different events. But what we have also started really to do is if you are planning a code sprint or something like this, you can contact us because we have in all the countries offices. And we are more than happy to give you these offices for free, use all the facilities. On one hand side, this is taking away a lot of organizational um, yeah, overload to you folks. And um, you can really come together as a community and use these facilities for your code sprints or whatever events you are planning. Then um, we have also started roughly one and a half year ago to work with the CXO community of Drupal. And twice a year, the CXOs across Europe, they meet and they also use our facilities and I participate in these kind of events because Microsoft did also grow as a company and we had also our challenges. So um, I can really help and support the CXOs with different questions like how can we do better marketing for Drupal, so also really some business um, topics. Yeah, and we are also doing some projects together. So for example, one year ago, one of the Drupal shops contacted me and he said, hey, I have a big customer who has SharePoint and he would like to use Drupal. So I was really helping this shop or this project to come together. And we have now a running project in the Netherlands where we have um, SharePoint and Drupal integrated together. And this is also very positive for the community um, because you don't have very often the Microsoft knowledge. So we can really bring together some specialists and help you to gain the knowledge. But also on the other hand side, the customer is really happy if there is also a bigger company behind where they have already some licenses installed. Another project is Microsoft Health. I don't know, have you ever heard about Microsoft Health? It's a specific solution for the health environment. Um, and a Drupal shop, who is now a Microsoft partner as well, pinged me and he said, hey, I have a big hospital who would like um, to use Drupal and the Microsoft Health solution together. So now we have integrated both products and um, this hospital is publishing some information um, of his health environment using Microsoft Health. And we are also working a lot now with the government. So as you might know, the governments are in front of open data projects. And also here, the question is how can we help each other to really bring open data um, open government projects together with Drupal. And we have now some projects in Ireland, in Austria, in Germany, where we really made this kind of partnership life in projects. So this is a little bit what you can expect from us, from myself. If you have something in your mind, feel free to ping me. 
Now, one question I get a lot is, you know, how do you, you know, how do we connect the dots to you guys in the Drupal community and the things that we can offer? And actually, as a company, we offer a number of different programs. So the things that are probably most relevant for you guys to know about is um, two things. BizBark, Microsoft BizBark, is actually for startups. It's a program that enables startups to have access to our developer tools, our platform technologies like SQL Server, Windows Server, um, and even our cloud platform for no fee access. And this is really to help bootstrap their businesses as they're a fledgling startup and getting their business up and running. Um, <coughs> and then similarly, Microsoft uh, website Spark is a program targeted to individual website developers as well as web agencies, small web agencies. And again, it's to reduce the sort of startup costs associated with having a business that you're trying to, to build or test for your customers who are on Windows platform or on Azure. Um, and it enables that easy, friction-free access to um, those licenses. The program also provides special offers that our network partners have in terms of you know, um, special discounts for their services and fees. We often sometimes have special events and local venues that we'll invite our members to. So these are great programs to consider if you're either a startup or a small web, in web agency or independent web consultant. Um, the Commerce Guys specifically, um, we recently announced uh, two, three months ago, they were accepted into our top tier BizPark 1 program. BizPark actually has three tiers. So the first entry tier, you know, most startups are qualified for, most young startups are qualified for, it's just BizPark. Then there's BizPark Plus. In that program, um, you have to be uh, sort of nominated in by um, local folks in, in the offices, and you get access to um, more more Azure hours and benefits. But BizPark One enables them to have closer ties with us at uh, Microsoft Corporate. They actually have a specific person that they're uh, assigned to as their portfolio manager at our corporate offices, and they have increased benefits as part of that program. And then the reason we have this program is we're really trying to identify high potential startups. And we saw Commerce Guys as being one of these types of startups. And so we really want to ensure by having someone connect the dots for them within corporate because we're such, well, kind of a big company being 90,000 people. Um, you kind of need help <laughs> sort of navigating our um, system. Uh, so they get help from a number of people, actually, both corporate and worldwide in our, in our offices to ensure their success on Azure and their deployment. And lastly, I want to just talk about how a lot of this stuff comes together in a customer success story. Um, SAG Awards, so that's the Screen Actors Guild, they have this huge Hollywood Awards ceremony that happens in January. Now, for most of the year, their traffic pattern is pretty flat. It's you know not a whole lot of traffic that comes throughout the year. But leading up to that ceremony in January, starting in November, they start to see spikes in their traffic. It's not very consistent. They're literally seeing a, the traffic spike up because of some announcement, and then spike up some more. And obviously, in the days leading up to the event itself, they see a tremendous surge of traffic that happens. They've got a huge amount of content, huge amount of traffic spikes. And so um, in previous years, what they would do is they would throw a bunch of hardware at it. But even in throwing all that hardware, they would still you know, see system failures and, and, and go down. But this past year, what they did was they decided they were going to place their bets on Azure and move their Drupal, Drupal 7 website, to Azure. And I say that a lot of this stuff comes together because in doing that, they actually use the Azure and SQL Azure modules from the Commerce Guys. That helped to enable this particular scenario. And on top of that, in the migration process, they actually use Drush on Windows. So they use Drush on Windows to automate a lot of the migration, including pulling out the content from the, their MySQL databases and importing those into SQL Azure. And so that, that automated a lot of what would otherwise be a manual process. And that actually used Drush, which I thought was wonderful. Um, so in that, so in a single night, that one premiere night, what they saw was basically over 300,000 visitors just in one night alone, and 800,000 page views. As compared with the year before, they only saw about 200,000 visitors and about 300,000 page views. So the, the lower number of page views tells me, you know, people got to the site, but they weren't able to navigate around because of the extreme traffic loads. Azure enables you to be able to scale up and scale down as you need those resources and, you know, be able to manage the type of load that you're experiencing at that point in time. So um, 
I hope that helps with you know understanding some of what comes together when we work together as a community. So I really see, especially this being uh, a success story of not just the work that we've done at Microsoft, but the, the stuff that we've done together with you as a community. Uh, and with that, I'm going to open up to questions. Um, anyone have any questions or? So the question was, is the Drupal SharePoint integration going to be published as open source? And Michaela's answer was yes on that. Um, it was developed between Microsoft, two Microsoft people, and three Drupal people. And it's available as an open source module. Um, it's published on drupal.org. Any other questions? We don't bite. Uh, you may see that at some point. Um, they're doing some integration, I think, with CodePlex on there now for projects. Uh, just, I'd give that a little more time. So. Yeah, I mean, there's still TFS is the primary source code and CI for Visual Studio, but it's it's opening up, right? So that Visual Studio actually sits in a different part of the company and they're they're starting to get some of that religion as well. So that's right. And then TFS is gonna get get support into it as well. Yeah. The Drupal Test boxes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that thing that sits over in University of Oregon, I think. Uh, what the heck's that thing called? Um, <laughs> okay. That's right. I think we're hosting the servers, aren't we, in OSTC to, to do all those Drupal core tests, the compatibility testing. Yeah. We started working with Gabor back in the six days uh, to try and get that all set up. So we got, I think we've got like all the test harnesses and everything that Drupal uses to do its core builds uh, for. Yeah. No, that's. Yeah, I think we we've, we've been that started no, like that started over two, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. Than, I don't know if Net, Netcraft has numbers like that. No, but um, the Acquia team has actually been sending me um, just logs of the folks that are actually deploying onto our platform. So they, you guys probably know they have a web crawler that you know they send out and check you know where Drupal is deployed, and you know they they're definitely seeing that that that's increasing. I don't actually remember the specific number of websites the last time they've sent me a, a report, but you know we're seeing that grow, and I, you know. My, my sense is that's definitely growing. With every DrupalCon that we've been to, and like it started with London, we were seeing streams of people coming in and saying, 
hey, you know, I used to try to do this stuff manually on Windows, and I found WebPI, and that was so much simpler. And so it was pretty clear that as people were you know, stumbling on WebPI or hearing about it from us, that they were starting to actually use it to deploy on Windows because it wasn't as painful as it used to be, or they didn't realize it, that it worked at all. And so, you know, a lot of this is an education process for us still that, to let people know that it works on our platform. Yeah, and a lot of the the other problem is getting an accurate count because a lot of, at least anecdotally, the, the people I'm talking to, a, a large number of them are doing them behind firewalls. So you can't always, it's yeah. a, even with the even with Dries's crawler, it's, a, it's really impossible to get a, a, an accurate count. And then another huge chunk of those are in uh, pub sector. So a lot of education, universities and federal agencies are using um, Drupal because then they're because they're already using Windows. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. I'm sorry. Um, Michaela, I think that was you that yeah. mentioned that. No, just send me an email and we've figured out. Uh, Any it's other pretty questions? much hen hands-on work on the demand of the community. What, what's your Twitter alias again, Michaela? I should bring that back up. So either you use Micraft as a Twitter alias or Micraft at Microsoft.com. Any other questions? Yeah, actually, I'm getting ready to deploy a Drupal site uh, actually running on a couple of instances of Ubuntu on Azure right now. Yeah. So, and we, we yes, I'm a user as well. Yeah, and we do have yes. other sites that are actually deployed on Drupal. Yeah. We actually acquired a, a site called uh, teach.edu. I think it's now teach.org. That's also a Drupal site, um, and so that's part of our assets, and that's something that they're moving to Azure as well. See, and that's, that's changing, right? So like our contributions to jQuery, I mean, we basically just chucked out our Ajax stuff, right? And just said that jQuery is better and it's already there and it's already being used by pretty much everybody. So let's just, let's just contribute to that. The other area where we're leveraging uh, existing stuff that's already going on is in Node.js, right? So we have command line tools that you can use to manage sites and VMs and uh, services in Azure. For Windows, we use PowerShell, right? That's kind of our bash. Right. Well, for you know, that doesn't work very well on a Mac, or it certainly doesn't work on Linux. Uh, right. So we built uh, command line tools for Mac and Linux using Node.js uh, because it's small, it's portable, and it's easy. Uh, so there again, we're trying to use you know existing uh, technologies, open source technologies, and by the way, contributing to them as well because we want to make Node run great on Windows too. Right. So you can actually use those same tools and run those on Windows if you want. You don't have to use PowerShell. Uh, but there again, we want to, you know, leverage something that's being good. Oh, and then uh, that's right. And then Hadoop is another thing as well, right? Where we basically chucked all our what was that called? Power something. I forget what that was called. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, we basically we're creating our Microsoft version of Hadoop, um, and then just realized, that, you know, no, just wh why don't we just work with the Hadoop guys, right? So you can now actually go and sign up. Uh, and try Hadoop on our on our Azure platform, right? And you know, use the little JavaScript console and actually go and work with some big data. So, uh, so yeah, just more and more examples, right? And that's it's you know, it started small a few years ago, and now I think it's largely kind of the way we want to do stuff. The use of GitHub is another example. I mean, that's the sort sure. of sweeping product thing, right? 
Right, so not only with the documentation, but all our SDKs are now all open source uh, and sitting out on GitHub uh, for Azure, right? So our PHP SDK, our Node SDK, our Java SDK, um, actually the .NET one isn't yet, but it will be. They just got to clean it up a little. And think, we've probably. actually been at the company long enough to actually personally witness a lot of these changes ourselves. I've been with the company eight years. Mark, you've been? Twelve years, right? And I was an open source you know, developer before then, right? So I used PHP back in the very early scary days, actually. So back in the four days before I joined Microsoft, and then, of course, you know, .NET came out, and I started doing that stuff as well. But um, it's been interesting uh, watching the evolution for that company. So, yeah, question. Yeah, I mean, it was a business, right? That was an argument. That was a statement made by a business guy, right? A C-level executive, not by an engineer, right? I don't, I don't think the engineers. Yeah. So what's happened is that people at that company that understood it finally got the message through and up into the into the leadership ranks in that company, right? So it was a small group of people at first, right? There's a guy named Sam Ramsey, who no longer with the company, right? But he spearheaded a lot of that mind shift uh, at the company very early on, a long time ago. Um, and then others, you know, it, they join the company, and I think at some point you just hit a tipping point, right, where it's like, look at this stuff's not going to bite, right? So, and in fact, working with it makes much more sense, right? So. Yeah. You know, who knows? It's never off the table, right? And there's two things that's going on, right? I mean, certainly creating interoperability and open sourcing the client bits that make that happen are one thing. But actually, we're contributing to to these projects as well, right? So that's another that's another very big shift uh, that's kind of happened over the last you know eight to ten years here. So. And I, and I think you're kind of. I mean, I think you're, you're, I think your uh, skepticism is definitely fair, right? And 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 how far does it? How far is it going to go? And you know, is it? Um, is it going to go? How far up the chain is it going to go? And that thing? that's that's completely fair. But um, time is going to tell. And what I've seen in the last—I mean, I've only been here for five at Microsoft for five years—and the the excitement that you see among developers who are actually—I mean, they're developers at Microsoft. They get to now play with. They can kind of come out of the closet, <laughs> so to speak, right? And and play with all the I mean, openly play with all the open source stuff that like they're playing Robert with Douglas anyway. Did the other day. <laughs> <laughs> but that you know, there's that, there's this this kind of new excitement among uh, the developer ranks, and and that's just kind of bubbling up. And I'm I'm you know I I feel good about the uh, the direction that things are going, and feel pretty good that um, it is gonna it is gonna continue to bubble up to the top. But you, that, you know I, I I understand and respect your skepticism. Sure. I don't know what I don't know what that means other than just being an interesting alliter alliteration. I don't know what do you mean. Well, the, the tradition has been to uh, get involved with an open standard and then speak to a certain point get complicated. Yeah, well, you, you know you know how standards bodies work, right? Okay, so th no, that's never going to happen, right? Because it's impossible to do that with a standards body, right? I mean.
Like it, it, within standards bodies, there's a history of every company trying to do something like that, right? So we're we're not alone in that. It's just you know, it's just the way that process works, right? I mean, with an open source community itself, I mean, you know, if we tried to commit something that was just uniquely Microsoft, then you know, Dries would say, "Go go to hell," right? He's not going to commit it. So I mean, within the open source communities themselves or those projects, there's a there's a standard for, right, and a process for how you get stuff uh, committed into them, right? So it with the, so. To, the, to your point, are we going to try to extend it or whatever you say? Uh, well, I guess the, my, my point was, you know, I'd like to hear you, not guarantee, because you can't guarantee, I suppose, but I'd like to hear your position. I, I, I have faith in that, in that the open source process works, right, and that I don't see ever that being a problem, right? And then with standards bodies, it's, you know, it's kind of a, a long, really ugly conversation. That's just the way that the whole process works, right? So. So um, just to comment on your, you know, us dog fooding some of the things that we're contributing to open source projects. That SAG Awards example that I gave to you, largely that work was done by our internal consulting team. So they they were using it, they were using for, you know, an external customer, but they were definitely pounding on the SQL Azure, you know, and using Drush themselves directly. And so as part of that, you know, obviously they found you know, certain issues that we, you know, were, you know, part of the process to help ensure it got fixed through the community, the people that we sponsored, and that we were doing things the right way and making sure those went back into the project. Yeah, and by the way, we, we dog food every day the Hyper-V support we contributed to Linux to actually host it in Azure itself, right? So we're actually, that's actually going into a service offering uh, in itself, so. 
this is a very small example, um, but for writing, uh, for writing the, uh, a lot of our documentation now, since we're doing it in Markdown Pad, we, uh, in, we're doing it in Markdown, we use Markdown Pad. Uh, and we started using that and found a ton of problems. We had engineers then contribute um, the changes to that project to, to make it work better. And I think that's the kind of thing that you're, that you're talking about, is being, using those, those projects and then actually contributing to, to make them better. Really small example um, in, in you know markdown pad, but um, I, I don't. I think what you're talking about is you know entirely possible on a on a on a bigger scale. Um, and just a side note, uh, Drupal.org we contributed some documentation to that site, and I was personally the one that was funneling some of that content to Drupal.org. Took me a while to figure out how all that all worked, and I as part of that I figured out that there were some issues too. So I actually posted those issues back to Drupal.org just so that you guys knew what I ran into is I was an end user of Drupal.org. Any other questions? By the way, in case you didn't see this, this is Mark's laptop. It is, in fact, a Mac. And uh, you know, everyone goes, aren't you going to get in trouble? And that's not the case, it's a, actually. That's a, it's the best. It's actually the best Windows laptop I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it's actually running. I'm actually running Mac. Uh, yeah, they should be an OEM for Windows, don't you think? No. So. Uh, I don't think we'll ever do a, a Microsoft Linux. Uh, I don't know if I in the, we would have the final say on that. Um, but there's others that have been that do it better. Let's say, right? Why would we? Why bother, right? And that actually, I think, to some would probably look like an extend or an embrace and extend and another thing, right? So let's just say that's probably best left to the the experts, right? So, yeah. We're pretty tight with, you know, we're, we're, you know, Shuttleworth is pretty happy with us right now. I don't want to piss them off. Uh, well, and don't forget, we now have Linux on Windows Azure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. And that's actually that the way we did that is those guys are the guys that are actually offering it on there, right? So it's actually, you know, their distros, they maintain it, they provide service for it, right? So and that's really the right way to do it. They're the experts, not us. So. That's why we, I think we're doing it right this time. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming to our session. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. It is. Yeah, we've met before. A long time ago. But I was trying to work out. You know what it was? It was at uh, it was at uh, was it eBay at the at the Junior no, Conference. No, no, I didn't go to that one. You weren't? So could it be back when it be way back? I used to be I used to run a Linux ISP in the UK called UK Linux, and I used to be the sponsor of the .org Village at all the Linux worlds in the UK. Did you come hmm. to any of those? No. I was sitting there and thinking, I've met you before. Yeah. Um, the only other place would be uh, I was I spoke at Build. Uh, you know what? I didn't go to Build All last right, year. Okay, so I was, the, was there. Crazy. That was the only because I was speaking. Yeah. I was allowed into the speakers' lounge. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody else who was speaking was a was Microsoft employee. 
so they had this huge debate. Was, was I allowed in the speaker's in room? The speaker last. You know, because, <laughs> because you know, yeah, you were speaker, but it's a safe room. Right, 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 right. Yeah, an NDA room, right? Yeah, yeah. So I had to sit, sit in the corner. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> so working with uh, Vishal. The web matrix oh yeah, Vishal, right, right, yeah. Um, so he sort of like he'd take me in, and I'd sort of sit in the little, you know, we'd sort of sit in the corner. Maybe I met you. It might have been during that time, but I made I I didn't go to build. But if you were hanging around those guys, I mean, that was my engineering team, right? Was those yeah, guys back then? So. I, yeah, but we've definitely, we've definitely, we've met. definitely met. I just don't so, know, remember where now. So unless it was from sort of Linux days when I was uh, hmm. in the UK, but. I don't know. I mean, I spent a lot of. I don't know, did you go to FOAs at all? No. All right. What else do I go to the UK for? Well, I don't know. Tons of shows. Yeah, there's, there's not. There, there aren't any anymore, really. That's yeah, right. not anymore. Um, the only one left is the is BET, which is the educational one, which is huge. It's like it's like the only exhibition left that has a computer in it. Or I wonder if it was. I went to a show it was about four years ago. It was at Alley Pally, actually. Right. Five years ago. What the hell was it? It was like a big hack fest. They had Doctor Who on the whole freaking time on the big screen. No, it wasn't. Was that? that we, no? no? All right. Yeah, well, we've met somewhere. We've met somewhere. Well, and it's good seeing yeah. you again, yes? <laughs> but it, it's, it was funny. I was in, in Chicago last week with Brian Prince was giving us the Azure yeah. presentation. Yeah. And he was like, he got to the bit about the different. Linux distros, and then he says, it's CentOS, or is it CentOS, you know, I never know which to call it. Um, CentOS was founded in the same office that I worked at. Oh, serious? So there were three guys in the office. Really? The company. Myself was founded Joomla, my partner founded CentOS, and the other guy we left to actually run the business. <laughs> so not surprisingly, the business died. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking that as well. I'm going to go grab a cigarette before I set up, I think. Yeah, I'll go with you. I'll go um, with you. But yeah, no, I was thinking that.